Hi, this is Carrie Bible, tour guide at the Hollywood Forever Cemetery, and welcome to week 12 of Tour Talk. I'm coming to you tonight in my pajamas with uh, very little makeup on except lipstick and wet hair. I apologize, this is the first time I've done this. Sadly, it, it may not be the last. Um, it's about 100 degrees in Los Angeles this weekend, and I'm just trying to hang in there and survive, so I hope you hope you don't mind. Uh, we'll start off with the thing I know you are dying to hear the most about, and that's, of course, Close Up, the Cemetery Cat. Last weekend, last Saturday, I gave a private tour, and three ladies were on it, and Close Up loved the attention. They fawned over him, photographed him, petted him, fed him, and he just soaked it up and followed most of the tour. And then the next day, on Sunday, I just wanted some outdoor time to kind of relax, so I went down to the cemetery just to walk around. And I saw these two little girls at the cemetery. They were probably about five years old. They were twins, I guess, dressed in matching outfits. And they were there. I don't know who they were visiting, but they were, they were there. And they walked up to close up. And he can be kind of sassy and have some catitude from time to time. So I sort of was a little worried about how he would respond. He was so good. He just sat there and let them pet him for a long time. They touched his face, his ears, and he just sat there as regal and calm as he could possibly be. And the little girls loved it. And it was so sweet and so beautiful and just, it was really, really heartwarming to see. Uh, by the way, um, I am uh, filming this the night before because I do have a public tour tomorrow. Public tours have resumed at least for now until I am told otherwise. Um, I am booking them and doing them. You have to book online and pay online. I'm capping the groups at pretty small groups. Of course, social distancing, mask wearing applies. Uh, for more details, you can go to cemeterytour.com. All right, and on to the star of today. Today, we're going to talk about a woman that, for my money, is probably one of the most misunderstood and unfairly maligned stars in Hollywood's golden age. And that is Marion Davies. Now, Marion Davies was a silent film star. She made a very successful transition into sound, but history has not been kind to her, and we're gonna we're gonna get into that. Marion was born in Brooklyn, New York in 1897, and she started out as a chorus girl on the New York stage and had already made her first movie when she met publishing mogul William Rhonda Hurst. Mr. Hearst saw her on stage and liked what he saw. Now, Mr. Hearst was married and had five sons, but his wife refused to grant him a divorce. So he simply had an affair with Marion that would last for 32 years, and he went about making her a huge star. One of the problems therein is that he liked Marion to be in melodramas, which really didn't suit her. She was fast and funny and a natural comedian, but Hearst kind of seems to have this attitude that comedy was undignified. But eventually, Marion did get to make some comedy films, and she proved to be one of the best and brightest of the silent era. And I have to tell you that when I first started studying film history, you know, I was a kid reading books, whatever I could get my hands on, and there's never much positive stuff about Marion and the stuff I came across early on in my, my days of reading all about these things. And I just read, oh, she's just a trophy girlfriend. She's a gold digger. She no, has no talent. So I never really gave her much credence, to be honest with you. And, of course, again, this is way before the Internet, way before a lot of the information and availability of the films we have today. Well, when I first moved to Los Angeles in the year 2000, around 2001, um, the Cinematheque in Hollywood here did a tribute, and they screened some Marion Davies silent films. And I thought, well, I've never seen her films. I might as well at least check that out. I went down, saw the films. I fell in love with her. And one thing that I think is important is always being open-minded and willing to revise your opinions. Because I know sometimes you, you get an opinion or an impression of someone, but oftentimes it's not always correct. And sometimes it's important to just, I think, keep an open mind and be willing to look further, look deeper, take a second look, and um, possibly revise your opinion. So the first Marion Davies movie I ever saw is still my all-time favorite, and that's Show People. 
And in the movie, she plays a young Southern girl from Georgia who comes out to Hollywood, and she becomes a star. And the movie, they shot part scenes on Hollywood Boulevard. They shot scenes all over the MGM lot. You see cameos in the film from Douglas Fairbanks Sr., Charlie Chaplin, Carl Dane, tons of silent film stars. She co-stars opposite William Haynes, who was a wonderful star in the 1920s. And it's a delightful film. She's so fast. She's so funny. She's excellent in this movie. It is available from the good people at Warner Archive. You can find it on Amazon. It does show up on Turner Classic Movies. Another film I highly recommend is The Patsy. That's another comedy. Again, a terrific movie. And thanks to historian Ben Modell and a lot of other people, a lot more Marion Davies movies are finally available on DVD. And I'm so grateful because, again, it really gives you a different impression of her, her talent, and what she contributed. Now, unfortunately, Hearst kind of overshadowed Marion Davies tremendously. And even within Hollywood circles, there was envy and gossip that, you know, she'd be nothing without Hearst, etc. I disagree with that. To be honest, I think she would have done even better without Hearst. I think he sort of rammed her down the public's throat with nonstop publicity. And he wanted her to do a lot of historic dramas, which really didn't suit her. I honestly think she probably would have had a bigger and better career without him. And she was once quoted as saying, I started out a gold digger, but then I fell in love. And I do believe that to be true. In 1937, Marion made her final film. She made a successful transition from silence into sound, but she was very worried about that because she had a natural stutter. But she overcame that and proved to be a deft comedian in sound as well. But by 1937, her career was starting to fade and Mr. Hurst was having health problems. And she really wanted to just sort of retire from the screen and focus on her charitable acts and taking care of Mr. Hurst, which is what she did. In 1941, the film Citizen Kane was released. When that film came out, everybody assumed it was true. They assumed that Marion was the talentless, heartless, gold-digging Susan Alexander Kane, and reality is a far cry from that, as Orson Welles would later on admit. In truth, Marion was once quoted as saying, I started out a gold digger, I fell in love. Well, when Citizen Kane was coming out, Hearst was in bankruptcy. Marion could have ditched him, packed her bags, left him, and been financially fine the rest of her life. She didn't do that. She sold $1 million worth of her jewelry and wrote him a check for every penny of that money to bail him out of debt. She also nursed him and cared for him until the night he died. And that is by no means the work of a heartless gold digging woman. And again, so many of her films are now available on DVD, so you can see what a genuine comic talent she truly was. In fact, one person in Hollywood, I think it was Noel Coward, said, Marion was so generous she practically makes up for the rest of Hollywood. And there are numerous stories about that generosity. There's one story that uh, one day she was being driven to the MGM lot in her limo and she sees a little boy, saw a little boy in the street selling newspapers. Well, she rolled down the car window and said, shouldn't you be in school? Why are you here doing this? And the little boy said, well, it's the Great Depression, ma'am. I have to help my family and work. And Marion was so horrified that this little boy was having to help support his family that she talked to MGM and she arranged for him to have a job for the rest of his life at MGM. And there are stories that if someone admired her bracelet, for example, she'd just take it off and hand it to them. So I think she saw things as, well, as things. And she really wasn't um, the person people thought she was. If you want to learn more about Marion and Hearst's lifestyle, if you can get to California or if you have been in the past, I highly recommend visiting Hearst Castle. It's pretty spectacular. And it was designed by female architect Julia Morgan as well. And more locally here in Los Angeles, Santa Monica to be exact, I recommend the Annenberg Community Beach House. It's the site of Hurston Davies' former beachfront mansion. The mansion was demolished, but the original guest house, and by guest house, I mean mansion, basically, the original guest house and the original swimming pool are still there. And when there's not a pandemic on, you can take a tour of the guest house completely for free. I think it's about $10 to swim in the pool. I've done it. 
and it was really, really awesome. This beautiful 20s tiles. It was, it was just beautiful. And it's right on the beach. So if you've never seen it, just Google Annenberg Community Beach House to learn more. But Marion was a talented woman, a lovely person, a very charitable person, and I highly recommend watching her films. There is one book about her that she wrote. Well, there's a few, but there's the, the only one that you might want to check out is this one, The Times We Had. It's by Marion herself. It's a bit rambling in its style, but it's from her voice and basically talking about her life with William Randolph Hearst. But my friend Lara Gabriel is writing the definitive biography of Marion Davies, or has written it, actually. She's been working on it the last eight years. It is so, so comprehensive, and I know it's going to be amazing. Laura is working on it right now, and the minute it comes out, I will be shouting from the mountaintops and doing everything I can to help promote this book because it's really going to be a revelatory and incredible work, and I'm sure it will be the definitive statement about Marion Davies. But... Um, Hearst died in 1951. Marion nursed him and took care of him right until the night he died. And she was asleep when he died. And her, her sons came in and took every single thing out of the house as if he was never there. And of course, she wasn't allowed to go to the funeral. And Marion only lived 10 years after Hearst. So Hearst died in 1951. Marion married for the first time shortly after her death, but it was not a happy marriage or situation for Marion. And Marion died of cancer in 1961. She is in a large mausoleum at Hollywood Forever, not too far from Tyrone Power, right next to the pond, but it doesn't say Davies on the mausoleum. It says Doras, D-O-U-R-A-S, which was Marion Davies' original last name. So I will post a picture of it after my talk at some point so you can see what the mausoleum looks like. But in any case, I definitely recommend watching Show People, watching The Patsy. There are a couple of documentaries about Marion Davies that you can find on the internet. And also there's a PBS documentary that came out many years ago. It's called The Battle Over Citizen Kane. I highly recommend that as well. And again, one of the things I really try to do on my tour is look at people in a different light. Look closer, look deeper, and sort of dismiss a lot of the scandal, gossip, rumors, and try to see them for who they really are. And when you boil it down, Marion truly was a talented woman, far more talented and intelligent than she was ever given credit for. And I think she was just, again, a lovely human being with a very generous heart. So that concludes this week's tour talk. I hope you have enjoyed it. Stay tuned for more episodes, more updates on close up, more pictures, and more posts coming soon to my Facebook page. And I'll see you next week.